Oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, hi, everyone. So uh, this talk is called uh, Communication, uh, or Communicating with, with Empathy. And uh, the only way that I can talk about this is by telling you something pretty personable, person, personal about myself. And that's uh, that I stutter, as you can tell. Um, and uh, because of stuttering, I have a very uh, different perspective on you know, how we can communicate with other people. Uh, and so this is me. I'm around three years old. I know, I'm painfully adorable. And uh, this is um, around the age that I began to show some signs of stuttering. But that's actually pretty, pretty uh, typical. A lot of kids who are around the age of three or four have some sort of speech impediment. Uh, it's generally stuttering. And, uh, and it kind of just goes away by the time they hit first grade or so. And so, uh, and uh, stuttering is also genetic. So my parents both stuttered until they were uh, in their teens. My brother stuttered until he was around 12 or 13. Uh, I have cousins that stuttered. I have a grandparent that stuttered. And with uh, pretty much everybody else, it kind of just disappeared over time. And so, you know, people weren't all that concerned about it when I began to stutter because it just kind of goes away. Uh, and so I finally kind of came to the point of like, you know, I'm 25 and I'm still stuttering pretty much every day, so I'm probably not going to outgrow it. Uh, and so you, as a person who stutters, you kind of develop these, uh, uh, these uh, what they call them is um, avoidance tactics. So you pretty much do um, pretty much anything to not stutter, right? So you'll change words um, in your head, right? Because people who stutter, they have sounds and words that they have problems with. And so, you know, in conversation, you you can think about the words that y that you are about to say, and then you change them before you are going to say them. Um, uh, you, or personally, um, I use a lot of filler words, so ums and ahs and likes. Um, see, <laughs> as a way to uh, to to, I guess, prolong, you know, the, uh, the stuttering that is going to happen, right? And so, you know, I came to a point where I just decided that it was too challenging to talk all of the time, so I made the very smart decision of just being like, okay, like, I'm not going to put myself in situations where I have to, like, talk to people, because that would be really bad. The problem is that like every situation you're in, you kind of have to talk to people. And so I found myself like not doing much and you know, uh, it began to directly affect relationships. And so, you know, I finally was like, okay, like I have to conquer this fear. I have to talk to people. And the only way that you know, I was going to be able to talk to people was if I just stuttered. And so uh, that was uh, when I decided to pursue 
public speaking opportunities where I would talk about stuttering as a way to kind of face the fear and to, you know, challenge myself and not be as terrified anymore. And yes, I know that sounds completely crazy if you're, you know, afraid of something and you're like, well, I don't know how to swim and I'm afraid of sharks, so I'm going to jump in the deep end with the sharks. That's the kind of person that I, I, you know, am apparently. And so after I gave a couple of talks, you know, my whole view on communication completely changed. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about with you today. So the main thing that, uh, that I want to tell you about communication is that communication is supposed to be an incredibly empathetic act. The problem is that it isn't ever, right? And so in order to talk about communication, you know, I want to talk about how, you know, we, we converse, how we view conversations. So this is you. And you're, you know, hanging out one day and you're like, hold on, I have an idea. So this is you, this is your idea, and you're really excited about this awesome idea that you have, okay? But, you know, like, you're, you know, like a chill person, like, you don't want to brag or anything, but you think that this idea could go places, right? <laughs> so you think about the idea, you, you figure out how you want to present it, you think about the words that you want to use, you think about how you want to feel, you think about how you want the other person to feel, right? And so you take the idea, you take it to your 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 spouse, your coworker, your boss, or you know, your f friend, and you tell them this this obviously great idea, right? And you are expecting them to just lose their minds. Like they're gonna think that this is the best idea. Like this is the idea that's going to end all ideas, and they they are gonna tell you that. And they react like this. And it's not that they don't care, it's just that you don't care about them, right? You don't want to have an actual conversation. You just want this person to love, you know, this thought the way that this guy loves himself. Hold on, there we go. <laughs> and this self-focused approach, oh, let's go ahead. <laughs> That's one of my favorite quotes of Kanye's. It's kind of brilliant. <laughs> so this self-focused approach to communications, it just destroys conversations. And, you know, it can even cause, cause problems on teams. So what do you need? You need to think about the person that you're talking to. You need to have, uh, you need to be empathetic. And that's because um, connection comes as a result of, of having empathy, right? And so if that's the case, like if this is true, which I believe that it is, then, then empathetic communication is going to drive collaboration. Now, when it comes to, to building teams and building products and growing things, you know, collaboration is going to be one of the most valuable tools that you have. But we have a problem. 
one of the things is that collaboration, you know, in 2016, it's done almost entirely um, via text, right? And look, I love Twitter. I love Slack. I think that those things are great. You know, they uh, uh, they help people feel more connected. They make sharing easier. But the problem here is that you are dealing with a Twitter handle. You are dealing with a, a username. You aren't like actually talking to a real person, right? And that's because, you know, when you're typing things into your phone or, or, or into your computer, you're not actually talking to a person. And therefore, the, uh, the empathy that you have to have is kind of lost. That's why technology can't replace the social aspect of face-to-face -face communication. And here's another truth. Failures of communication, you know, just can't be, can't be automated away. You have to confront these things face to face. Because, you know, when you close the laptop, when you put away your phone, when you shut down uh, the software, you are dealing with people. So this is all great, but we have um, a second problem, and that's people kind of hate talking to each other. Because talking is hard, right? And conversations is hard. Our, our conversations are hard. And collaboration is extremely challenging. And collaboration fails. So, so let's break down the reasons why collaboration fail so we can know exactly how to fix it. So the two main reasons are that people are afraid of being wrong, and they are afraid that people aren't going to completely understand them. So let's talk about that uh, the fear of being wrong, because that's just the fear of being judged. Right? You know, I can't tell you how many times I have, have, you know, thought of a thing that I wanted to say, and I have chosen to not say it because I was afraid that I was going to be judged. Right? And the other reason is that people are afraid that they are going to be, you know, totally understood, right? And, you know, the people in here, uh, you guys are technical people, right? And you have to deal with people that don't do tech, like me. So you have to explain things over and over and over and over and over again until the other person can completely get it. A lot of the times when you are explaining things, we don't ever get it. I'm never going to understand how to code. So it doesn't matter how many times you tell me like how this works, I'm not going to get it, right? And that can be an incredibly frustrating situation, right? And so instead of just saying, hey, I don't think I'm ever going to get this, you know, we just get angry and we're like, well, this is dumb or I don't have time with this, right? So how do you fix these problems, right? 
the first thing that you have to do is speak up and and encourage the people around you to do the same because silence kills collaboration. The next thing that you have to do is think about, you know, the the listener. When you are speaking to a person, you should take into account, you know, exactly what that person has to hear in order to truly embrace what it is you are trying to communicate, right? You know, we're all on different planes uh, intellectually, and that's completely fine. Speaking to people on, uh, on, on, on uh, their, on their, on their, ugh, on their level doesn't do anything to compromise yours. Uh, the next thing that you have to do is think about the speaker, right? And the best way that I can explain this is to just kind of think about how you have to pay attention to me. Like, I know that it's not always easy to, you know, totally understand all the things that I'm communicating, and you have to be extremely patient. You have to pay attention, and you have to focus on what I'm saying. So when you discuss you know, your thoughts and your opinions from a place of empathy, and you listen to others from that same, same, same place, you know, you are going to create something bigger and better than uh, what you could have come up with by yourself. And that takes vulnerability. It's the vulnerability to embrace silence or to talk about something that makes you, you know, feel really uncomfortable. And it also takes courage. The courage to, to listen to people when they are struggling to say something. And the courage to kind of stand there when they are being vulnerable. So the true keys here are to be patient, you know, uh, to be patient when you are listening to a person, but especially when you are speaking to them and to be vulnerable and to be courageous. because all of those things are going to be the foundation of great team collaboration. Thank you.